Hey everybody, welcome in. Welcome to the Should I Buy series. The latest token we're going to analyze today is called the Graph. And you guys have been looking for this and excited about it for a long time. So here we go. Let's jump in. Uh, as usual, channels about math, money, and freedom. And of course, remember, this is edutainment and not investment advice. So the valuation process, you guys know it by now, but what it does, how it ranks, what type of industry it disrupts, value props, tech and developers, tokenomics, ecosystem, growth, longevity, risks, price prediction. And this one was a tricky one from a price prediction perspective, but again, wait till you see what I came up with. Anyway, so what it does, well, basically the TLDR of all of this is think what Google does for the internet. This is what the graph does. Basically, it indexes data across different blockchains. It's like an Ethereum data sorting layer is easy way to think about it. And it's a one stop shop for searches and data retrieval to really help people build dApps on the blockchain. So at the background, uh, three fellows, Yaniv Tal, Yanis Polman and Brandon Ramirez set this up. They all have engineering backgrounds, different disciplines, and they work together on developing developer tools uh, in the past. Now, they found it very difficult to build developer tools for decentralized platforms, and this is what they aim to solve. And their vision is to help people build dApps rapidly without compromising user experience. And they pulled it off, so it's, it's quite impressive. So how it plays, so basically what it does, it helps people develop dApps faster by overcoming all of the complex stuff, like building index servers, writing complex data queries, and reliance on centralized databases and centralized indexing services. And um, that really helps speed up the whole process. Now how it plays, so basically the solution streamlines the process by putting the indexing layer on a blockchain. Never been done before up until now. And uh, they utilize a marketplace approach, providing data where indexers compete to serve up the requested data. And with the graph, indexing is highly efficient, secure, and completely decentralized as well. So how it plays, a little more depth. So the graph analyzes and gathers blockchain data before storing it into various indices called subgraphs, allowing any application to send a query to its protocol and receive an immediate response. Simple, huh? So uh, in terms of the scorecard ranking, there are not many players here, but you can see the graph is the biggest and they just broke into the top 50 with the $2 billion market cap. There are other players there that you may have heard of like Ocean Protocol, etc., or down the line, but the graph is the clear leader in the space. So good on them. Now, industry disruption, this is kind of a spectacular. If you look at the explosive growth and the use of the graph, they now have daily queries of over 850 million, which is, again, very impressive. And now industry disruption. The decentralized finance projects are dominating the query volume, and this affirms things like uh, some of the names that I am in, like Aave and Uniswap, and they've been doing a lot with this particular platform. And in fact, speaking of Aave, the Aave performance over the last couple of days has been amazing. And uh, about 10 days ago, I did a should I buy video on Aave. And I remember saying Aave under $200 is a no brainer. So that wasn't investment advice, but now it's over 300. So anyway, let's carry on uh, growth opportunities. In terms of growth potential, other names that I'm in like Solana, Polkadot, and Polygon are all going to be getting support soon, and of course, the NFT industry. So that's also positive, a lot of opportunity. Now, what are their value propositions? So Graph offers a suite of developer tools, APIs, and GraphQL that really allows requesters to easily and efficiently query data and create filters and find the data they need. Um, nodes can also automatically extract the necessary data from dApps rather than requester waiting on the DAP to build the API and request connections. So again, it really, really streamlines the whole development of the whole DeFi space. So one of the reasons I actually really like this technology. Now let's talk about technology and the developers. Graphs at the cutting edge of decentralized data indexing protocol, and anyone can operate a node within the graph network known as a subgraph. 
uh, subgraphs or open APIs allowing for indexing of data from the Ethereum blockchain or an Ethereum-based DApp. And the node operators are called indexers and they earn GRT tokens. We'll talk more about that as well. And the notable subgraph operators are Uniswap, Aave, and MakerDAO. Again, Uniswap, Aave are, in full disclosure, holdings of mine. So tokenomics. Now this is where it gets kind of interesting. Uh, indexers require GRT to stake in order to provide indexing services, and they earn query fees and indexing rewards from operating their node. Curators deposit GRT into a bonding curve to earn a portion of the query fees sorting. And de delegators can stake their GRT with indexers in order to contribute to the network security and earn a portion of the fees and rewards from indexers. So for all of those of you who are big into staking, I know there's a lot of you out there. Now let's talk about how the GRT token is used to incentivize all players of the network to really create continuously improving APIs. Well, it, part of how it does this is because all indexers, delegators, and curators are paid in GRT tokens, and they are also paid depending on their performance of how they index and the subgraphs. There is also a rebate pool that rewards all the network participants based on the contribution to the graph network. The rebate pool is designed to encourage indexers to allocate a stake in rough proportion to the amount of query fees that they earn for the network. So from that perspective, it's actually pretty cool. And uh, they use a Cobb Douglas production function to allocate the rewards in the rewards pool. So this has been really, really well thought out, but not everything is well thought out. So here we start getting into the tokenomics. GRT is the graph's native ERC-20 token, 10 billion initial supply, inflation rate 3%, 1% burned, etc. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about the tokenomics because it's simply too important. Now, the team and the backers have 57%. I think this is very greedy in my book, and that's not typically how such a business should be structured. The community has 35%, but of that community, 6% was a strategic sale, and 58% is with the foundation, and only 6.3% really goes to the indexes and curators and 4% goes to the public sale. Note, they only have 29 employees. So somebody's getting their pockets lined. But let's go a little bit deeper and look more at the tokenomics. So here, the GRT has staking, but ultimately it will have immense sell pressure over the next three years. As token unlocks will be slowly released, the GRT grant rewards for the community the indexers, the delegators, the curators, etc. But the inflation is over, in some cases, over 800,000 tokens a day. And this will put immense sell pressure and outpace buy pressure, I believe, and combine that with the fact that the query burn fees will never be greater than or equal to the inflation and rewards distributed. So I believe this has the crappiest tokenomics because it has no room for price appreciation. But I'm going to go and show you some of my pricing models and give you a feel. But what's really important to stress here is if you imagine, imagine you have a token that has continuous tokens being dumped on the market. And currently, let's say it's trading, it's just 72 cents or something, but it's, imagine it's a dollar. That means for the tokenomics to go, the price to go to three or four dollars, that means it would have to reach a $40 billion market cap. So basically, if you buy at a dollar, you're looking at a 2x in three years, which isn't very good. But let me walk you through another view of this. And this may not make, make much, much sense, but it is startling to see the increase in GRT circulation over the next four and a half years. And we'll go deep into this during the price predictions as well. So on um, some very positive news, however, the ecosystem has over 2,300 subgraphs, 3,000 developers, 200 indexers, and 400 curators. And subgraphs list a who's who shortlist of the DeFi players in the space, like I mentioned before. So that is extremely positive. Now, longevity and track record. Um, Edge and Node, the company behind Graph, was founded in 2018. Graph launches Mainnet in December 2020, so it's a little over six months old right now. And they raised $25 million from big backers, including Coinbase Ventures and a few other key players. So let's talk a little bit about risks. I, was, I think it's one of the most important areas. Risks and tokenomics are where people should focus and they don't. So the initial token distribution is bad. I think we've made that very clear. 
even the 35% designated as community, the majority is set aside for the foundation. And there's very little of the token supplies in the hands of the public and the community. And the amount of tokens locked and the aggressive token vesting schedule may be a headwind for the price action over the future. It's also still a very young project. And though it has backers, it's seen a lot of adoption. It doesn't have a lot of longevity and track record. So let's look at the pricing stuff. First of all, the chart. If you bought when the mainnet launched back in December 2020, you would be flat. So nothing has really happened. The price did spike up to approximately $2.80, $2.85, I think, back in the day. And now it's languishing around $0.72. Cents. So maybe the world has woken up to the tokenomics of this. But we'll see. I want to talk about token dumpage. And <laughs> this is a term I use just for fun. But between now and 2025, nearly 8.1 billion tokens will be dumped on the market. And heavy dumps in July 2021, which is very soon, and again in December 21 and 22, will basically, you know, multiply the supply by about 3.79 times by my calculations, which is heavy and very important for people to be aware of, especially if you're timing your buys. Um, but this is one of the ones that you could nearly try and orchestrate some very good shorts based on the time of the dumpings. So anyway, token dumpage price illustration. I put this together as well. So you guys can wrap your heads. Imagine if the GRT price stays at today's price of 72 cents for the next 10 years. And as the supply actually increases, that means even if the price stays at 72 cents, in order for it to absorb all of those new tokens, the market cap has to grow by 4.2x to nearly $9 billion. So just this, this exercise will kind of help many of you wrap your heads around the actual pricing and why it's so important to look at tokenomics. Now, when I looked at all the analyst price predictions, I look at the usual suspects, uh, Coinpedia forecast, Trading Beast, Digital Coin, Wallet Investor, and crypto price predictions. And their average prices, if you look at 2021, you've got Wallet Investor at $10.23. I don't know what they're thinking. Um, you have a more conservative Coinpedia, $1.61, possible. Then 2022, you have average price predictions of $7.64, but Wallet Investor, $20. So again, I don't know. Then they go to $30 in 2023 and $40. I don't know how they came up with these numbers, but they are off the charts. And I realize as well that there is a lot of value to this platform, but these price predictions are just downright silly in my opinion especially if you take into account the tokenomics now crypto price predictions came up with a 60 dollar target in the year 2030 and a 30 dollar target in the year 2025 but the real thing here to look at is how does it compare to my price predictions so here we are <laughs> as usual i do my own thing i use my own fundamental analysis and i've come up with uh, three different price predictions so my predictions are based on the utility they add to the DeFi ecosystem. And I took into consideration the GRT supply and forecasted market capitalization based on value and divided up by my token forecast. And basically I have three cases. I have my, my GRT, which is the graph bear case, my expected case, and my bull case. And you'll notice as well some strange price action happening in 2022, 2023. And a lot of this is because of the dumpage that I discussed as well. So I came up with the predicted market capitalizations based on them succeeding and growing very fast like they are and adding a lot of functionality to the world and helping people build dApps faster. Now, my bear case for this year is a $1.60 and my expected case is $2.50 and my bull case is $3.33. And that's assuming the whole DeFi market just goes completely crazy. But next year, you'll notice the price is full. Dollar twenty-three, dollar eighty-five, two forty-six. Same thing. Uh, another low, low set of prices in twenty twenty-three, and things don't really start stabilizing for me up until twenty twenty-six, and that's because of the sheer volume, billions and billions of tokens being dumped on the market. So if you look at the delta, imagine we do go to a dollar sixty-seven cents. You know, you could hold it for four or five years, and it might just go to a dollar eighty-nine in the year twenty twenty-five, and that is kind of the real secret here that I want you all to know. And I, I take these price predictions extremely seriously because if I'm putting something out there, I want people to know, you know, they can 
again, not investment advice, but I don't want people coming back to me five years from now saying, oh, you said this in 2021. Anyway, what is really interesting to know as well, be careful what you read out there. There's a lot of papers that are extremely bullish. So this is one article written a few days ago uh, by Anurada Garg and saying, you know, oh yeah, the graph is going to hit $10. So just uh, be careful what you read. Take everything with a grain of salt. Now, in terms of my price predictions, benchmarked against the analysts, this is kind of interesting. Av the average of all the analyst price predictions in 2021 was $4.74. Mine was two fifty. dollars So the analysts were two times higher in 2021 than mine. But it gets more extreme if you look at 2023, they're six times higher. 2024, they're seven times higher. 2025, eight times higher than me. 2030, eight times higher than me as well. So the question for you all out there, who do you get your money on? And this will be interesting to see how this shakes out over time. So uh, let's go to the conclusion real quick. And sorry for going so fast, but, you know, you guys want things to be rapid. So the conclusion is Graph is definitely one of the most innovative projects in the space. And it's changing how crypto projects handle data indexing, which is very important. Just think of the way I like to think of this as well. Because some people, it might be hard for them to wrap their heads around exactly what the graph is. But if you imagine Chainlink, which I've discussed before, it's used to get real world data onto the blockchain. Ethereum is used to store that data immutably, which means it can't be changed. And it's always on and always accessible. And it has all the smart contract capability. The graph is what's used to get the data off the blockchain and back into the real world, where people can use that actual data to make decisions or act, take actions off of it. So that's the simple way to think about kind of like the three-legged stool of how all these things operate together. So quick conclusions again, impressive project. It's tech allows users to retrieve data in an efficient and decentralized way. And it's a short, short existence. It's already seen crazy adoption with major projects in crypto, especially in the DeFi space, which I love. Hence, I analyze graph. And I was very, very interested to hopefully buy some. Now, while the graph token has a solid use case and is super attractive as a project, the tokenomics are just awful, leaving no room for capital appreciation. There's better places to place your money. The way the founders structured the tokenomics and lined their pockets and the dumpage over the next four years is, you know, reason to stay away. It might be something that you could short in interim places, but... Uh, that's just my two cents. Big thank you to everyone on Patreon. I know a lot of you are looking for this one as well. And it takes a long time to put all this work together. And we'll see. So hope you like it. And uh, see you all soon. Bye.